and welcome to the meat shop. Thanks for clicking on. My name is Duncan Henry and today we're going to be trying to answer some of your questions regarding smoke flavor. Lots of times I see you guys in the comment section down below saying something like Dunk I don't have a smoker like you can't see it because this is in the way. Lots of you guys don't have a smoker like uh, this commercial unit the pro smoker behind me so you want to know how could I get a simulated smoke flavor so that's what we're gonna aim for today it's gonna to be a bit of an experiment today the recipe doesn't necessarily matter as much as it would normally but more so the process today and this is gonna be for smoked sausages the only part about the recipe that really matters is that you're using some cure for the smoking process so sodium nitrite uh, sometimes it comes in 6.25%, sometimes it comes in 5%, but you can use it at 3 grams per kilogram for all these recipes or any smoked recipe and you'll be good. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a sausage and we're going to process it multiple different ways. I had a batch of, we make beef patties for the store, our patty machine broke down halfway through making a batch of sausage, or patties, so I've just turned that patty meat into sausage. That's what we're going to be experimenting with. So it's going to be one that's fully smoked, it's going to be one that's cooked and smoked, and there's going to be one that's smoked and cooked, and then there's one that's going to be just cooked with the addition of liquid smoke. And we're going to see the results side by side. So this is the recipe that we will be using. It's my beef patty recipe. I know it off the top of my head because we make so many patties in the summertime and blow your mind. I just have ground beef, 1.5 kilograms. And so this is what the you're going to see in a minute here, the rest of the meat block is this recipe. They all share this recipe. But the recipe here is, and I've jazzed it up a little bit um, from my regular beef patties. So in this little bowl, the beef patty recipe is salt at 10 grams per kilogram. So that would be low for a sausage. Ground mustard powder, two grams per kilogram. Garlic powder, or granulated garlic, sorry, two grams per kilogram. Onion powder, two grams per kilogram. White sugar, two grams per kilogram. And then to make them a smokable sausage, we added cure, so sodium nitrate at, nitrite at three grams per kilogram, as well as sodium erythrobate. Then I added some peppercorns in order to make it look pretty when we're done. And they'll add a nice little flavor pop when you hit them. So those are the ingredients that are in all the sausages. So the flavor shouldn't change, the only thing that in the flavor profile that should change or we're looking to see the difference for today is the smoke flavor and we just mix this up till it gets really good and sticky okay so i've got this mixed up really good and now right here right now is where this recipe is going to deviate from the stuff that i have in the cooler to make up okay we're going to add liquid smoke you can get liquid smoke in all different kinds of flavors this one I have for the store, we use in a couple products. It's just called an all-purpose liquid smoke. Um, but you can get it in hickory, you can get it in apple, you can get it in yada, yada, yada. But it's quite potent stuff. You don't need very much. Um, I'm going to use a little bit more than I normally do. In most of my products, I use it in the range of half a gram to one gram per kilogram. Today, I'm going to use two grams per kilogram. So I have 1.5. 1.5 times two is three grams. And uh, by the way, I have a little bit of water in my measuring cup here on the gram scale because if you try and measure out just 1.5 uh, you know, uh, th or 3, sorry, it wouldn't be very much. You'd lose most of it to the little container. So we're shooting for 3. Okay, so I've weighed out our 3 grams here and this is kind of what it looks like. So it's kind of quite a brown mixture and if you were to smell it, it's really bitter smelling, really strong. So in it goes and again, this recipe here is going to get no natural smoke. We're going to count entirely on this liquid smoke to see if it will simulate natural smoke flavor. That mixed into our sticky solution and then we're going to stuff these all into 75 millimeter smoke permeable fibrous casings. 75 millimeter fibrous casing. Okay and then just squeeze tight on the end of the horn for this guy. Oh, I should use my C-clamp but we're started already. Okay, there's the end of it there. I'll get the last little bit out of that horn. Okay, just work it in. Look around for air pockets. If you've got any air pockets, give them a little poke with your knife. So it should be good. And uh, 
Smells quite yummy. That liquid smoke actually smells pretty good. There we go. This is sample number one. I'll tag it, pop it in the cooler. I'm probably not going to get time to smoke these till tomorrow, which is fine. They can sit in the cooler overnight. So tomorrow we'll get them in that new cool pit boss. I'm excited to use it. It's the first time I'll be fully smoking sausages in the pit boss. So thumbs up for that, but we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, this is some uh, leftover patty meat that uh, we had from when our hamburger machine broke down and that's what I'm going to use for the experiment today. I'm going to turn the patty meat into smoked sausages. You can see the inside here is kind of like pink and the outside is off color. That's because they just came out of vacuum pack bags. So I'm going to use these for the smoking project. That means we have to add cure. So I'm just going to run them through the grinder here today. We were making some sausage earlier. Uh, and mix that cure in. It'll be easier to mixing it by hand and I got it dirty so it'll be a little more convenient. So the burger mix already would have had seasonings in it and water added to it so all we're doing is adding cure, uh, sodium erythrobate and I'm adding some peppercorns to make it look a little better as a smoked sausage so we can just sprinkle that in over top, fire the grinder up, let it mix it in for us and then grind it through and in all likelihood I'm going to give it uh, the evening to cure because some of those are big chunks and they're a little bit froze yet so even with the mixer I might not break them down into small enough chunks for it to go straight in the smokehouse. All right guys, it's the next day for me here. These have been sitting in, I've got them all tagged. I think I've added a couple. I don't know what I, can't remember what I ended on yesterday, but I think I added some after the camera turned off. So we got some, it says on the tag here, just so I don't lose track, because I got a lot of cooking to do. This one's gonna get smoked first, then baked second, and then we're gonna do the variation of that as well. So this one I'm gonna take into the house, bake first, smoked second, and then we got our kind of liquid smoked, liquid smoked and baked guy here. So smoked and then poached. So I think I maybe added this one afterwards. We're gonna cook them in water after they've been uh, smoked and see how much of that smoke flavor is retained. And then we got this guy, the smoked one, straight smoked. And then of course the reverse of the poached one, poached and then smoked. The only thing is this smoked one it's probably going to be in the smokehouse, in that little uh, pit boss smokehouse, quite a bit longer than all these ones. I'm going to pop them in there at probably 150 for two hours is what we're going to do for smoking time for all the controls. And then this guy, since that Traeger, not Traeger, pit boss is rolling smoke the whole time, he's going to end up getting a little bit more smoke, which kind of is the only variable that is inconsistent with this little test, but that's okay. Anyways, let's get them all off to wherever they're going cooking here. Okay, I got the water pre-warmed up here. Take our lid off. And this is the poached then smoked sausage. So we're gonna go in there and I'm gonna put a little bit more water in there, bring it up a bit and then watch that temperature. Once it's 155 to 160, I will pop them in the smokehouse to get that two hours of smoke. All right, so I brought these guys into the house. I'm going to pop them into the oven, the liquid smoke and bake, and then the bake and smoke. And I got my oven set at 185. It goes low enough, so we'll pop these guys in there on this tray and see how it goes. Okay, and I forgot here, I'm just gonna stick a thermometer in my uh, sausage meat here. So I don't have to open and close the oven over and over again. Excuse me while I put the thermometer in, I can't do it one-handed. Okay, there we go, in the center of the mass of the meat. Okay, so the little smoker has come up to temperature. I'm hoping these fit in there, they might be kind of low. 
Well, they're going to be a little bit low. They're going to be too long. I'm going to have to tie them up a little bit. I'll be back. Okay, there we go. I just had to tie it off a little bit shorter. But in goes the smoked one, and I got a couple more to join them. By the way, to make smoke sticks for this little smoker, I just used 3 8 stainless steel rod. Now I can hang them like they're sitting on my dowels in my big smoke shop or smokehouse. Okay, the additional two go in. And these are the two that are going to be smoked and poached and smoked and baked. So I'm going to start the timer on those guys. They're going to get two hours in here. Okay, you can see the temperature is creeped up to 159 on this guy that I've been poaching. So I'll pop them out of here, tie them up, and stick them in the pit boss. Okay, so I'm going to pop that poached one right here in for its two hours now and start the timer. Just making sure it's not touching that uncooked one in the back because this is fully cooked now. So I'll make sure there's no contact and uh, start the timer now. Okay, our hour has passed on the two that went in there right off the bat, so we'll take them out and put one in the oven and get one poaching. Ooh, our uh, poached one doesn't look super awesome, but anyways, these two here are off to go get cooked now. Okay, it's coming out of the smoker into the water until it reaches that fully cooked temperature. Okay, and that one that came out of the smoker is into the oven, that guy in the background there. Okay, the guy that's been poached has been smoking for two hours now, so we can take this one out here, put him in the cooler. Okay, the time has come to take our smoked and poached one and pop them in the cooler. Okay, a couple hours have gone by, and these two on the bottom, they're probed, are done. They hit 170, so we'll take them out. Uh, one's gonna go straight into the cooler, and the other is gonna get smoked some. Okay, there's that one that come out of the oven. Time to get his two hours of smoking in. Okay, the smoked and bake is coming out now. The last of the things to come out of the oven today. All right, the second last unit of the day here, the one that was baked and then smoked we'll pop him in the cooler with the other ones and the last we're just waiting for him to finish up holy smokes we're finally done look at that that one that's fully smoked in the the Brunswick pit boss lovely job Brunswick pull it out stick it in the cooler taste it all tomorrow okay here is the fruits of our labors after all that smoking and poaching and bacon um, I guess an aesthetic note, the ones that I did, that I poached, look worse than the ones that I finished in the oven. I think the poached ones, that water kind of penetrates through the casing a little bit, creates pockets, makes it look a little soggier. So the ones that baked have a better visual appearance right off the bat. The ones that did not receive any poaching, I should be clear. Okay, we gotta get to, we gotta get to eating them. That's what we're all, we're, all that matters here is the flavor. The smoke flavor is the number one thing we are investigating. Okay, so we have Mr. Smoked. I'm gonna taste him first, and that's the baseline. That's what I'm used to, the smoked one. We'll just cut him in half, get a little cross section for you. I realized after that I didn't put any binder in these. That might have changed things, but they look like they're fairly well bound, it smells very good. Okay, there's how the smoked one looks. Not bad, decent protein extraction. And he's got a little bit of wrinkle. I didn't cold rinse any of these because I was worried it would affect the amount of smoke that they heard. I guess obviously these two that were poached got put in water, but the ones that were smoked and baked or just finished in the smokehouse did not get a cold water rinse. That could have helped prevent the wrinkles on the outside of the casing, but I didn't want it to affect the smoke flavor. So, here we are. Let's see what this base model tastes like. I'm not even gonna have a whole piece because I've got a bunch to eat here in front of me. You can notice the smokiness in there for sure. You can tell it's a smoke product. Okay, that's the base. Now, do any of these taste like my smoked 
beef salami, you could call it. Fully cooked beef salami, like a kosh salami or sandwich salami. First up, we'll try the smoked and then baked. So if you had a cold smoker, you could have smoked it for a couple hours and then took it inside, finished it in the oven. So it smells pretty comparable. I'd say they smell identical. I would say they taste just about the same, near, very similar, very near to one another. This one's just slightly less smoky tasting, I would say. Again, really good. You can tell it's a nice smoked product. Now we'll try the poached ones, where I think the smoke flavor is going to fall off. Smoked and poached. Interior looks not bad though. You see that? Not bad. Okay. How does it smell? It does not have, now this one smells much more milder. It doesn't have the same hickory smell to it. Almost no smoke. Yeah, pretty, yeah, very little, very, very, very little smoke flavor. The texture is more dense. I know we're focusing on smoke flavor, but the texture is more dense from when it comes out of the, uh, the water. I feel like maybe it lost some of the fat, made it a little more dense, but it's still really, it's still pretty good. I'd say the smoked one's better, but uh, it doesn't have the same smoky flavor for sure. So smoking it and then poaching it, you lose, I don't know, at an estimate, something like probably 70% of that smoky flavor. This one, I anticipate will be a bit different. You can smell the smokiness on this one. So if that's how you're gonna do it, I got a feeling poaching it and then putting it in the smoker is the way to do it, not the other way around. Looks good on, on the inside. Let's have us a little slab. Okay. It's not quite as strong as the first one or the second one, but it does come across better than the smoked and then poached one. You do, you do get a bit of smoke flavor out of this. Mm. Clean my palate off. Then this one is the baked and then smoked. I feel like it's gonna have comparable um, features as the poached and then smoked. It's there a little bit. I'd say it's, yeah, it's pretty close to that poached and smoked one. Pretty similar, really splitting hairs to say there's a difference between the two, I think. Baked and smoked is an option for you. Now this was the one I'm most curious about. So I guess if I were to rank order these right now, I would do the smoked all the way in the smokehouse. I would then probably do the second one was the next best, I think. Smoked and then baked. And then it was probably a tie for third between the poached and smoked and baked and smoked. I like the, I probably would put uh, the baked and smoked ahead. It looks a little better. And that poached one looks all wrinkly and we lost some of the fat. And lastly, for sure, the smoked and then poached. That gets you the least amount of smoke flavor, which isn't too surprising. You smoke it and then put it in the water. The water is going to dilute it out. But I am quite curious about this guy. See if we can simulate that smokehouse flavor using just liquid smoke and then baking it in a kitchen oven. It smells quite different. It smells like the bitterness of liquid smoke compared to that natural hickory. Bit of a difference for sure. Let's see, I just feel like it's gonna have the same flavors but kind of more of that unnatural bitter smoke, liquid smoke flavor to it. Yeah, for sure. It's good. It's not the same though. You can't get away with using that liquid smoke to simulate real smokehouse flavor. It's not bad. Uh, it's, I'd still give, I'd still eat the salami. I'm still eating the salami, but it's not the same. It's different. I don't know if it's worse. I probably prefer the natural smokehouse flavor, I guess. So anyways, guys, I hope that this little experiment was kind of useful. Uh, I hope I did it in a way that makes sense to you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and uh, I'll try and do more experiments like this to help you guys out with the equipment and different variables you have at home. Thanks again, guys. Take care.